I'll never get the time back that I lost with my kids. I don't care about anything else. I just want my kids, because what hurts me the most is like, thinking in my mind what they feel like. like I wonder if they're wondering what happened to me. Hi, I'm Danielle. I'm from Philadelphia, and I'm a heroin addict and a crack addict. Um, I currently work in the sex industry. And you're on the streets of Kensington, Philadelphia. That's where we found you. Unfortunately, yes. How old are you, Danielle? I'm 30 and flirty. 30 and flirty? <laughs> That's what I always say. Okay. Even if you're not 30? Did you say that when you were 29, too? No. What did you say when you were 29 and fine? I didn't... <laughs> <laughs> no, I wasn't fine. <laughs> okay, okay. How long have you been out here on the streets? Um, three years. Three years? And and you're injecting heroin, fentanyl, xylazine, whatever, whatever yeah, it's called now. Yeah, whatever it whatever is. Whatever you're getting. <laughs> yeah. And smoking crack, or do you shoot that too? I smoke crack, yeah. Um, how, how did this happen? Um, so, I was eight years clean um, as a mother. I was doing the right thing. I was working and at rehab. And um, so like a lot of things happened at one time. I left my marriage and then some, uh, one of my old clients at the rehab, I had already had quit. So it was like three months later, he must have been obsessed with me the entire time. I didn't, I didn't have any idea. And he broke into my apartment and he held me hostage for like hours and he duct taped me yada 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 and he ended up putting me in the trunk of a car and he took me up to a quarry and he was going to throw me in there but he was on drugs and he ended up just leaving me in the trunk for two days and you so, were sober at this time yeah yeah jesus so um so old man found me and um uh, i was like shell shocked didn't really know how to deal with it and um you know, I already had things going on at the time, so I was already... Even if I was clean, I was still getting high. Every, you know, it doesn't matter. So, that happened, and then um, things happened with my husband's parents, and they basically took my kids from me. I wasn't even getting high. I wasn't, wasn't doing anything wrong. I, I reached out for help to every resource that I could, because that's what you're supposed to do. And I tried to do whatever I could to save myself and my privilege as a mother and it was during COVID mm. and five minutes over a video zoom court hearing I lost custody of my kids completely and that was just it for you though that day sure. I got high the same day yeah my gosh do you see your kids anymore no it's been pretty much three years yeah I just got pictures on Facebook and one's in first grade one's in kindergarten and my son cash and he just turned four on July 3rd, so. Is that the hardest part about being out here? Is you, if you had to say like one thing you miss be, that you've lost because of your addiction is- it I push it so far back in my mind that I like think to myself, I say this and I've done other interviews, I say this all the time that I just, I think time has stopped and it hasn't. Mm. And it's like reality smacks me in the face like sometimes and then poof. Mm -hmm. Push it back in my mind again. Do you think you can get sober? Yeah. You want to be sober? Yeah, you for hate, sure. Do you hate doing this? Hate it. So let's talk about that a little bit. Walk us through a typical day. Are you sleeping on the streets? <sighs> yeah. You wake up on the streets. I have, I've had three tents stolen from me. So like... Tents stolen from you? Yeah. So you're sleeping in tents? Or... Not or, anymore. Where are you sleeping I now? basically mean like a hut yeah? in the woods. Out of what? Just whatever Random you shit. So you're sleeping Disgusting. in the hut. You wake up at what time? So like I wake up early because um, it's just hard to like sleep. Yeah. Anyway, but like it's hot, so I just get up. It's a typical day. I walk. I don't sleep around here. Mm -hmm. That's dumb. Mm -hmm. um, I walk down here and I, if I have money, which I try to go to sleep with money. Mm -hmm. If I don't get robbed, I wake up and I, I get dope and hard and I'll go where I get high, where everyone else gets high and I'll go get high and then I'll try to get something to eat 
sometimes they hand stuff out, but lately they haven't been. And then I'll fix myself up, and then I'll start walking the ab and try to make money. And then you just walk back and forth on, on this ab? I don't really have to walk back and forth. You just get out of a car and someone else picks you up right away? Usually I'll just do, like, one, and then I'll chill for a little bit because I've tried to, like, get away from that because it's Not so really emotionally much. draining. Yeah. And I've had a lot of support lately, for real. Um, I've had a lot of people help me out because... Out here? Yeah. There's a lot of, like, resources. Right? I've... No, it's not even resources, it's just strangers. I've had strangers help me more than my own blood. For real. So, um... How much are you using on a daily basis? Are you um, shooting up, right? Yeah, I uh, shoot probably, like, 10 bags of dope a day. How much is that dollar wise? That's five dollars a piece. So 50 bucks. Yeah, but now like the dope's like filled to the tippy top, so you don't really have to. So there's a like half that now. But um, with the uh, crack, it's like out of control. It's probably like two, three hundred dollars a day. A day? Mm -hmm. So you have to come up with th three, four hundred dollars a day just to yeah, continue doing it. Surprisingly, what you're doing. I do. Yeah. I so, hustle like anything. And, and pretty much it's all through sex work. No, not everything, no. No. I sell works. A lot of people who come from out of town, they, they're too scared to cop on the block, so they'll pay me to do it. Okay. Yeah. When you say sell works, you mean sell syringes to yeah. people? Yeah, yeah. Um, what did you think when I came up to you? What did you think? I, who did you think? What was your first thought that you thought? That was, you wanted to do a date. I thought I wanted to take you on a date. Yeah. <laughs> is, but is, you're, like, you're too good looking for that, so I didn't think you would pay for it. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, what kind of what kind of people do you see for dates? Like describe uh, a lot black, of black white, young, black old, old men. Black old men come down here. Yeah, a lot of a lot of um, white old men too. Yeah. Yeah. What are some some of the what's the most common thing they're asking for? Blowjobs. Blowjobs. Yeah. Are people asking for sex too? Not much. It's kind some of hard weird to do shit. In a car. Some weird shit sometimes. Like what? Like, they want me to choke them out, <laughs> or they want to have sex on my feet. Have sex with your feet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or, it, where do these things take place? In their cars? Yeah, in their cars. So, so they're just having sex with your feet in their car. Yeah, um, so I've stomped on people's private parts on the ground. In their car. No, on the ground. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I've used strap ons. Uh, it's more weird shit than anything. So people are finding you and and and, and do you think that there's like a, a component where they're they they want these things so they're just finding you to live out their fantasies? Yeah. Because they can't do it at home. They'll with say their that girlfriend too. Girlfriend or with their wife. Or yeah, or they'll tell me like they'll be, like jerking themselves off and they just want me to tell them that their wife's a whore. Wow. Yeah, so there's like a lot of stuff like that. Yeah. So when you're seeing people, are you are you mostly seeing them in the cars or do you guys go places? Yeah, they come up in the cars a lot. Um, usually, if you're smart and you know the rules down here, you don't go on a date with someone fo on foot. Oh, I see. It's I dumb. Gotcha. I gotcha. Yeah. So you learn those things over time, you, huh? You learn to control every situation that you're in as a woman. So the very first time that you decided to do sex work for money, was that in the last three years or was that prior to your eight years of recovery? No, this is the last three years. I never thought in a million years that I would do anything like this. What was that very first, like how did you figure out that you could do this for money and what was that very first time like? Was it, did somebody else help you? Did Were you working with I was just like watching other females and like I would even talk shit. Like she's like, I could never do that. Mm -hmm. And um so what'd you do, come out here or did you go online? My, actually, my boyfriend went to jail and I didn't know what to do. So, um, like, I started meeting people and I had some girl, like, talk to me about it. And um, I did, I've done online. Online's a lot better, actually. Is that the first time how you did it or did you walk the streets? Yeah, just here. Walk walk the, the streets, streets yeah. Were you scared? Oh, yeah, I'm scared every day. You still get scared? I'm scared right now. Of us? No, not you. Okay, 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 good. Five minutes before I woke up, you guys, they were just shooting an AK-47 and they got blocked down. They're shooting an AK-47? Yeah, they were just shooting. You didn't hear it? Uh-uh. Uh -oh, How I long were you standing I there? I thought those were fireworks. No. Wow. It was an AK-47 right on Clearfield. That's a block down. 
what's the craziest thing you've ever seen out here? Whether it happened to you or to somebody else? Okay, so right here, it was six o'clock in the morning. It was, kids were walking to school. I w just woke up and me and my homie were walking on the block right across from here. And we get up right to that daycare right there. So we're literally right across the street. These two black kids were running. There was a truck parked right here on the sidewalk. And there was a dude running after them. The one kept going, the one turned around, and he went to see if he was still being chased. And the dude was like, psych, no, nah, I was just playing with you. And he's like, psych, pull out his gun, and he started shooting him. So the other dude's ducking behind the truck, and he pulls his out, and they're just shooting, shooting, and shooting, and shooting. Playing with each other, and then seconds later, the they're shooting. Kids are like right at that corner, dude. I'm How like, old do you think they were? They're like five years old, these kids. Five year olds? Oh, the, that were standing there, but the kids that were shooting? Yeah. They're probably not even 18. Not even. I was like, should we move? <laughs> and there's and there's little kids 20, yeah. 30 feet away. Cops sitting right there. Wow. The cops Did are anybody get shot? No. They don't they just shoot the shoot. They don't Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. What's the worst thing that's happened to you out here? Um I uh Oh, last week, three days in a row, I've had, I was robbed three different times at gunpoint by kids not not even older than like 14. So little little kids, we've heard that a few times, there's just little young kids just out here being reckless. Yep. Last night, I was sitting behind Walgreens where everyone gets high, but I was like more towards the end because I was just trying to be by myself, and these, all a car full of black men pulled up and they told me to empty all my pockets that I was that if I didn't, that I was gonna lose my life. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I never thought that that would happen to me. Mm -hmm. And it's happened three times in the last week, you said? Yeah. Two weeks? Yeah. Um, has anybody on a date ever tried to do anything to you? Yeah. Um, Bad stuff on dates? I've been, uh, they've tried to rape me at least three or four times. Yeah. You got away? Yeah. Is that, you think that's just because you, you control the situation, like you said? Absolutely. I vibe everything. What's the what's the scariest or riskiest thing that you've done to feed your addiction? I stole someone's car and all their coke, and it was like ounces and ounces of coke. It's a drug dealer. Yeah, and I stole his car. From around here? Yeah. yeah. And we was doing a date, and he fell asleep, and I took his car and his coke, parked the car, and just. Wow. <sighs> that was dumb. You ever fear? consequences from it uh, it's, it's happened yeah yeah um you feel bad about doing it like what's the worst thing that you just feel bad about to feed your addiction not necessarily a risky thing or a, a scary thing but something that you just absolutely hate yourself for or beat yourself i don't want to say hate yourself i pickpocketed an old lady in walmart just went straight up to her and took her I took the money out of her pocket and ran out the door how old do you think she was Probably like my grandma's age, like 70. Would you would you do those types of things if you weren't? <laughs> no. That's not you? No, not at all. It's not me. Do you wanna do you wanna get clean again? You wanna go back to that lifestyle? I'm gonna get clean. You're going to. Absolutely. I, I love that. I Absolutely. Love that. Um I can't do this anymore. Do you think that if you stay out here you're gonna die? I'm probably close to dying already. You're close does that I mean that statement right there, you're close to dying. Does that is that like? It doesn't. It's a normal out here. You're just used to it. Yeah. And you know that at any moment, any day, it could be your last one. I seen two people die yesterday. You, you saw two people die yeah. yesterday. Their wounds were so bad. There's like thousands of flies in their wounds, and there was like purple. Right here on the half. Two of them at the same time. Wounds from shooting up. Mm. So is that what these drugs, the, so xylazine, are you familiar with that? Mm -hmm. I've seen uh, more people with like bandages wrapped around their hands and legs here than I've, I've never seen it before. Yeah, anywhere you'll else. see a lot of them, no feet, no leg, no arm. That's what that is, huh? Yeah, if you walk around here, yeah, you'll see it. People in wheelchairs. And, the, and this, the dope is just literally eating people's flesh and it kills them because it gets infected. So bad, so bad. Does it happen to you? Yeah, I was about to go to the hospital tonight, actually. It's, it's, uh, and the...
in the summer, it's worse. It's like, it gets worse. It's like fucking. It's worse. What do you miss the most about uh, a good time of, of the past? I miss like being a mother and having like the things that I like, you know. Like and what? like just like being able to do what I want, be able to get in my car with my kids and go to the park and not have to worry about being sick. Mm. Just like probably simple stuff that people take for granted on a daily basis, huh? Yeah, I humble myself for the experience down here. I do, but I'll never get the time back that I lost with my kids. Do you think that the, the things you're going through right now, if you can get past them, that you can use them as a as an asset to help somebody or, or just know more I've about I've done it before. You've done so it before, right? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And I know the, I can. What about with your kids? I mean, just teaching them about the world and about people. My kids. Because your kids are young, right? You said one and four? Um, seven, five, and four. Seven, five, and four. Okay, sorry. No, you're okay. And, and uh, that's young. Yeah. Kids are very forgiving. They're all boys. They're very forgiving. Yeah. And, and they want their mom back. Yeah. If you could wave a magic wand, I think I know what the answer to this is going to be, but if you could wave a magic wand right now and just go into your, your miracle life, what would that look like? You want my kids again? I don't care about anything else. I just want my kids, because I know what hurts me the most is like, thinking in my mind what they feel like. Mm -hmm. like. I wonder if they're wondering what happened to me. Mm -hmm. Or what they're told or anything like that. That's why it's the most, because I don't want them to think anything negative because I didn't do it because I don't love them. Do you fear that they would be uh, like angry or something if you decided to get clean and come back? Or do you feel that they would graciously accept you with open arms oh yeah they would be so excited to see me i know they would mm -hmm. i know they would i believe so too yeah i know they would if there was anything um that you wanted to end with you know to, to leave with somebody watching or just with us today what, what, would, what would you say if anything at all i know like people just look at they probably see other videos of kensington down here and People think that it's just so easy to just boom, stop, get clean. This is the worst the drugs has ever been in the entire world. And for somebody that's just starting to get high, you're gonna die. You're gonna, if I go to rehab today, I'm gonna, and if I decide to leave, I'm gonna immediately die. Because that's just how it is. It's just like an oil change. So it's the withdrawal protocol is non-existent at rehabs right now for the xylazine. So everyone thinks it's so easy. Just go get clean. It's not. Yeah. It's not that. It's not easy. Because if it was, then there wouldn't be so many people out here knotted out. Because right. it's really not easy. It's easier to be out here. Than it is to get clean. Yeah, I talked to a couple of people and they said that they were like, man, I had to leave detox. I was on 40 milligrams of methadone and didn't even touch it. Mm. It's the xylazine. Mm. The best bet is to go to the hospital. So you're going to go soon? Yeah. I have to. Tell us you're going to go soon. I'm going to go. Okay. I'm going to fucking go. All right. I appreciate your time. Thank you. It was nice meeting you guys. You too.